Hello, D-Class. As you can tell, I'm here with my lovely friends of the SCP crew. And here I'm going to tell you and them something interesting. If you go to the CDC and ask very nicely, they'll give you a sample of the bubonic plague. You, don't, you wouldn't have to go to the CDC for that. It's It's still a living bacterial infection. You could probably go to most, like disease banks and get it i assume most disease banks wouldn't hand you that <laughs> i mean true yeah you're not going even to get handed it, is, but... even if there's a modern cure the modern cure hasn't been used in so long that they generally aren't kept in stock anymore the modern cure is antibiotics it, huh. it's a bacterial infection that is true, but it used to have something more exact. But oh yeah, I'll admit that does kind of take care of everything relating to bacteria for the most part. Hmm. I'm gonna crush this fucking Lego shark. I mean, dragon. God damn it, bright. <laughs> oh my god, this this dragon is just a fucking sauropod with wings. I need him. Anyway, are you ready to hear the first SCP of the night? Which is the picture from the cup that I sent yesterday. Oh, as a side note, I just made sauropods extinct again. Good job. <laughs> I mean, I guess we're ready. Maybe. Alright. SCP-1647 also known as Log of Extra Scholastic Events. Description. SCP-1647 is an anomalous phenomenon affecting high school teachers in the southern United States. Subjects affected by SCP-1647 display erratic and illogical behaviors, showing no apparent awareness nor concern for themselves and others. Affected individuals often perform nonsensical and random actions, such as attempting to climb the nearest building, undress, or play catch with the school's furniture. Often, uh, several severely injuring themselves and or other faculty members. At time of writing, no student has ever been harmed by the affected teachers. Affected individuals will continue to display their anomalous behaviors for four uh, for five hours, the subjects claim to be aware of their actions, but are not able to reason during this condition. SCP-1647 seems to mostly occur during classworks and important scholastic events. SCP-1647 has never occurred during school trips. The first confirmed instance of SCP-1647 occurred on Redacted in the Redacted High School, Louisiana, where it was initially identified as a single extra normal event designated as EXE 3562. The following is the original report regarding EXE 3562. Event description Every teacher of the redacted high school simultaneously displayed abnormal behaviors during and after a standardized math test for exactly five hours. Students and other faculty members report various t teachers licking blackboards and, and the physical e education teacher throwing a urinal from the building's roof, resulting in the injury of redacted faculty members. Date of occurrence, redacted. Location, Redacted High School, Redacted, Louisiana. Follow-up actions taken, local media suppressed, injured individuals treated on site, Class B amnestics administered to students and faculty members, cover-up story regarding vandalism enacted. Following this event, SCP-1647 has occurred redacted times. SCP-1647 has been classified Keter as of redacted.
Yeah, there you go. This uh, seems like one of those that is like mostly uh, filled out by addendums. Yeah, I kind of want to hear at least one addendum. Uh, there's a couple. All right. Addendum 1647-1. Incident 1647-alpha. On redacted, an SP-1647 event occurred in the redacted high school in redacted Kentucky. After the containment of affected individuals and in administration of an S6, Foundation agents found a small luminescent sphere suspended three meters from the ground within the school's boiler room. The item was later identified as a source of SCP-1647, and they referred to as SCP-1647-A. Why it has never been found in other areas under SCP-1647's effect is unknown. SCP-1647-A was transported to Site-15, where it underwent an operation of reverse engineering. SCP-1647-A was proved to be entirely composed of metal, and its inner workings being similar to trans transistor-based devices. During the operation, SCP-1647-A autonomously activated, causing Professor Redacted and Redacted, respectively former professors of mathematics and physics, to display behavior similar to SCP-1647's affected. Professor Redacted and Redacted were successfully re restrained by on-site security personnel, both recovered five hours later. SCP-1647-A's mechanism was successfully removed and subsequently contained. Following a period of inactivity for seven months, SCP-1647 was reclassified as neutralized. The redacted. Addendum 1647-2. Incident 1647-beta. On, on redacted. Three months after its reclassification to neutralize, abnormal behaviors of multiple teachers were reported from the redacted high school in redacted Arkansas, identifying as an SCP-1647's occurrence. Affected individuals do, did not limit themselves to nonsensical behaviors, but directly injured or killed other faculty members, including other teachers, while no student was harmed. Upon arrival of Foundation agents, affected individuals ceased all other activities and engaged in contact with them. Six individuals were terminated on site, while others were contained. Passive monastics were administered to all present. All deaths were stated to have been caused by fatal car accidents. Sorry. Ooh. Oh, why are you yawning so much? Alright, uh, caused by a fatal car accident. An instance of SCP-1647-A was found inside the, the thoracic cavity of Mr. Redacted, an English literature professor, and was immediately neutralized upon extraction. The instance was introduced in Mr. Redacted's body via surgery as proven by the numerous scars found on his body. Addendum 1647-3, Document 1647-17-GI. Following type typewritten note was also found inside Mr. Redacted's thoracic, thoracic cavity. The source of the letter is currently unknown. We are students. Our school system is shit. Teachers do not fucking care about us. They treat us like machines. They always laugh when they when we screw up. They always act like buffoons. We will no longer tolerate this. Hundreds of students will commit auto homicide. The school is too hard and the teachers do not care. But now it is our turn to laugh at them. Two Solanos were then found within other instances 
instances of SCP 647 A from other hmm. SCP 1647 events. A foundation currently contains only 10 instances of SCP 1647 A, despite it having occurred over redacted times at time of writing. Addendum 1647 4 notes on SCP 1647's current status. SCP-1647 no longer manifests with it, with its previously stated pattern. SCP-1647 events now occur randomly, varying from 3 to 54 times a year. However, with their actions are invariably dangerous, affected individuals have not directly harmed others a second time, with the exception of Foundation personnel. SCP-1647 has been reclassified as Keter as of Redacted. And there you go. Okay, so am I getting this right when I, uh, like, is this just, like, only affecting a specific school? Uh, no, it's affecting, it's happening in multiple states, so. Oh, okay. Uh... So, yeah, it's, it's move, it moves around. What to do with that? Uh, I, I think it'd still just be certain groups. It's like, even though it moves around, which makes the Keter classification understandable, um, it's still only affecting, uh, like, people in the general vicinity of these schools. Yeah. Like, the, this isn't going to cause a complete collapse of society. Yeah. Unlike the others that we have up above. <laughs> and it's not going to cause the complete destruction of a state like Kudzu. Yeah. No, before we... something. Yeah. No, before... That's a question. That's, that's a question. Is Kudzu an SCP? <laughs> we already did that one. Well, yeah, but it was a different, like, it, it was, like, a special kudzu. Right. I'm asking just standard, everyday kudzu. Is Probably that an not. SCP? Anyway. It's not an SCP, but it should be. It's just we understand it. That doesn't make it any easier, but we understand it. So, uh, when I was looking at a picture for the next SCP, this is what popped up for it. Just to prepare yourselves. Oh. This is stream planning. So, based upon this. What? What am I looking at? I don't know. <laughs> what? Okay. It looks like you... a conspiracy. It's, what? Why it's the you... next SCP. <laughs> Why would you say prepare SCP... yourselves if you don't understand it? I haven't read the SCP before, so how would I know? Well, yeah, but why'd you say prepare yourselves? As if, like, like you know that something terrible is about to happen. Don't worry about it. All right. All right. Next SCP is SCP-1659, also known as uh, Directorate K. Right. By the way, Jerry, we're hearing background noise. I'll, I'll mute myself. Oh. Just listening to some stuff. Oh, shit. This. Oh, God damn it. Not again. Why with the. Why with the Greek letters? No. <laughs> Just explain the things. But use one, two, three instead of the Greek. If it helps. Okay. Yeah. 
Alright. But apparently this one's a long description, so we may not have to read addendums. If there are any. Alright. SCP-1659 is a, is a quasi-governmental organization transiting all known political boundaries and divisions. This organization is made up of at least 315,449 individuals who possesses the inherent sense that they are a part of a large governing organization known to its members as Directorate K. Individuals affected by SCP-1559 demonstrate knowledge not only of the existence of, the, of this organization, but which specific subunit they belong to and a detailed sense of their duties to be carried out, out as a part of SCP-1659. Interviews with affected subjects suggest that, that this knowledge is spontaneously obtained through unknown means, usually between the ages of 17 and 32. Once a subject is affected by SCP-1659, no known means are effective in eliminating knowledge of direct, Directorate K, short of systemic neurological damage or death. Individuals from throughout the world appear to be affected by SCP-1659 at random. The organizational structure of SCP-1659 is highly complex and appears to have no overarching goal or purpose. Subunits within SCP-1659 are given titles and Assessable missions, How, however, the, the work performed by members of, the, of a designated subunit often has no discernible connection with the unit's stated purpose. Foundation researchers, researchers have documented 1,297 subunits to date, apart from Director K, serving as the central administer, administering entity. The relationships of these subunits to one another is currently impossible to determine. Hierarchies appear to change regularly, and reorganizations of these units happen frequently. Individuals affected by SCP-6059 frequently spend significant amounts of time at seemingly pointless tasks. Documented examples include a retired electrician identifying himself as a technician attached to the Office of Slime Mold Protection, repeatedly spinning a coin on the ground at a crowded bus stop in Toronto, Canada. Three individuals claiming to work for the Anui Control Bureau traveling throughout rural southwestern Slovakia, counting any observed instances of East Cardenius. Valonifnaris, also known as the common doormouse, and text messaging the results to a phone number listed as the Japanese embassy in Lima, Peru. A 15 final division work crew in a privately owned truck traveling to traffic intersections in various towns in the south. Ganesan Province, South Korea, cleaning signs related to pedestrian safety. Redacted, Police Chief of Redacted, Bolivia, and confirmed SCP-1659 subject containingly building in his backyard a crude antenna structure four meters in height out of tinfoil disassembling it and reassembling it. A self-described official meeting of the People's Gov Governing Ward of Gal Bladder Health, consisting of a spontaneous gathering of 28 individuals in a remote region of the Mojave Desert in California, United States, culminating in any detonation of an explosive device estimated to be equivalent to 500 kilograms of TNT. Individuals affected by SCP-1659 are not compelled in any discernible manner to perform their assigned duties, however, subjects are almost always highly motivated to carry out tasks assigned by SCP-1659, and affected individuals 
display behavioral traits and aptitudes commonly associated with organizations displaying high trap levels of morale and team cohesion. While observed in activity of SCB-1659 subjects at the individual level appears to have no logical purpose, Broader contextual analysis has revealed that SCP-1659 exhibits a profound ability to affect world commodities, market fluctuations, cultural trends, real estate development, movement of refugee populations, and, to a limited extent, deployment of military assets. SCP-1659 is believed to achieve this through a a combination of the sum total of the tasks its subjects carry out, its ownership stake in a collection of strategic private, for, private firms, and its placement of subjects in posts at all levels of government. In most cases, influence exercised by SCP-1659 is subtle and does not de deviate significantly from general societal e expectations, though it, this is theorized to be partially attributed to SCP-1659's agreement to abide by the Nine Mile Station Protocol. An exception appears to be trends in fine dining and col culinary technology, upon which SCP-1659 has exercised profound effects. Many world-renowned restaurants are either owned or financed by SCP-1659, including Redacted in Paris, France, Redacted in Osaka, Japan, and Redacted in Catalonia, Spain. Subjects affected by SCP-1659 are present throughout the world and generally fall into three observed categories. SCP-6059-1 These individuals occupy leadership positions within SCP-6059 Analogous to agency directors, minor political leaders, and other high-ranking officials. Approximately 2% of the SCP-6059 are classified in this manner. Members of the di Directorate K itself believed to be central authority of SCP-1659 as part of, the, of this group and are believed to number between 100 and 120 individuals at present. SCP-1659-2, an estimated 15% of SCP-1659 instances belong to this class. These individuals tend to be tasked with duties re reassembling those of mid-level official and are usually supervisory or quasi-independent in nature. Many individuals in this group hold positions of authority and establish governments at all levels throughout the world. Redacted formal Prime Minister of Gambia for being removed by Foundation operatives in the wake of incident SCP-1659-A uh, an incident 1659 Mike is believed to ha have been one of the, these individuals. SCP-1659-3 The vast majority of SCP-1659 fall under the collective classification. These individuals perform tasks associated with the various subunits of SCP-1659 and are thus the most likely to come to the attention of, of the Foundation assets, while SCP-1659-3 instances are drawn from a wide er array of sources. A high proportion of these individuals are trans- Seeing inmates at penal or mental health institutions or other that trench traditionally live outside mainstream society. And there you go. That's the SCP. Okay, so for starters, because I've been fixating on it, 
earlier in this. It sounded like you said the name of a desert, I think, in the United States, right? Uh, let me go back and look. Let's see. Let's see, Toronto, Canada, uh, Slovakia, Let's see, and, uh, Bolivia. Bolivia. Uh oh yeah, Mojave Desert in California. How is it spelled? Uh M O J A V E. That would be the Mojave Desert. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard of that desert, so uh Sorry, my brain was fixating on that the entire time after you said it. Uh, uh, in terms of this thing's threat level, honestly, it doesn't sound like it's that dangerous. Besides the whole um, having a hand in political affairs. And in that case, like, if it's just, for the most part, trying to avoid doing anything super big, I don't, I, I don't know if it's that much of a threat. It's just the Illuminati. I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> um... Trying to think, didn't we have a classification that's like world changing? Yeah, world changing. We added that because we have two in there. Yeah, I think that might be a good place for this because, like, they have a big hand in political matters. They could probably affect the world massively, but the main thing they seem concerned about is, uh, food restaurant, <laughs> fucking restaurants. Yeah. Should probably be glad they're not uh, thinking about anything bigger at the moment. Yeah, that's true. Like, let's just just let them stick to their restaurants. I'm fine with that. I, I just find that kind of amusing. They have all this power. And the only thing they actually do with the power is make really nice restaurants. Okay, yeah. hey, just to be fair, there's quite a few mafias that also like making restaurants. Well, yeah, but they, they're doing other things with their power other than just making restaurants. Yeah. Well, yes, but they make very nice restaurants. Yeah. Well, yeah, but this 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 group only makes restaurants. They have all this political power and they only make restaurants. That's yeah. fair. So I think I know what I'm going to do from now on. Mm -hmm. uh, that while I'm re before I read it, I post a picture of the SCP that we're going to be talk talking about. That way you can get a mental picture of what it is okay. while, while I'm reading it. That um, makes sense me yeah yeah uh its nickname does not match the picture but that is the picture of the scp <laughs> scp 1681 also known as american idols <laughs> <laughs> uh, what yeah that doesn't look <laughs> Did I hear you right? Yeah, its nickname is American Idols. Um. Right. I think that's an image that you could probably put a spoiler on. Okay, I'll fix that. I mean, I doubt it would cause any issues, but I imagine there, it could be triggering for someone to just randomly... Look into stream planning and see, oh, wait, 
there's like a group of men jumping off of a building. Alright. This one is shorter than the other one. <laughs> mm. Oh god damn it, the GOC is involved with this. Well, I mean, I would just... Great. I mean, I would assume it's shorter, considering the fact that those guys are doing something that's making their lives much shorter. Every time I see GOCs and, like, the description of an SCP, I always imagine something went wrong. I mean, the the whole uh, chair incident doesn't really inspire confidence. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, if anyone can traumatize anything, the GOC can. I shouldn't say that, especially after the chair. I think it's the only time I've ever read about a traumatized chair. Yeah, mm. motherfucker, motherfuckers woke up one day and said, I'm going to traumatize a chair. <laughs> they gave they gave PTSD to an object that just wanted to be loved and useful. They come to think of it, just sit on them. Come to think of it, assuming that uh, I think it's Proposition One Twenty something here in Colorado. Assuming that that gets through, and we have approved psychedelics for helping PTSD. Does that mean we could give the chair psychedelics to help them? <laughs> oh my God. Maybe if they were still a chair, but at the moment, uh, I think they're in too many pieces. Just, they might, just, they might uh, mistake it for an attack on their person and kill the, the person trying to give it to them. No, 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 no. Here's the plan. Like, we're using them as mulch right now, right? Yes. Plant the psychedelic mushrooms in the mulch. Oh, <laughs> see what happens. See if that helps them in any way. You know, it might help them feel better. After all, if those are used to help other people, that'll make the chair feel a lot better. The because all becomes... it wants to do is help people feel better. Yeah. I well, mean, yeah. At the very least, he could be a valuable source of uh, the the foundation getting access to psychedelics for. I don't know. I assume they have to deal with PTSD having people here and there. I don't know. It's just... the CP Foundation. Well, then again, yeah. they have a nestic, so they probably wouldn't need standard medications. Anyway, I don't That's know. Fair. I don't know why, but when Agent when you said to plant plant side de psychedelics, uh, on the mulch, I started thinking that the mulch starts turning into rainbow colors because of the psychedelics. It's not. That's not how that works. I right. know it doesn't. I, I don't know why my brain really thought that. I will say using a uh, normal mushrooms would be safer than where the SCP gets its typical amnestics. That's true. And also, come to think of it, like maybe I don't know as much about amnestics as like a sci-fi thing, but. I feel like they wouldn't go all the way in dealing with PTSD. Because, like, if all they do is get rid of memories, okay, but with PTSD, like, well, there's an actual way of Trust me, it gets rid of everything. Actually, yeah, Does Hatchet, it? There, there is, I, I forgot what it is, it's like the, really, the strongest form of an amnestic that literally wipes everything. The PTSD, the memory, even them even uh in everything it just wipes out everything of that entire event ptsd er memory everything oh, okay. you don't even remember who your mom is yeah it it's it's a heavy hitting amnestic they rarely ever use it i see I don't think it came from 3000, though. I think it came from something else that was far stronger. Uh, I could, I have no idea. It could be from something else, but 3000's amnestics are still powerful. The issue is, if you give too potent of a punch on 3000's, instead of continuing to get rid of them, they'll give you memories that aren't yours. Yeah. And then you'll start thinking you're someone else, and then you'll start wanting to enter 3000's body, 
while still being alive. So you'll be eaten alive and in horrible, in a horrible state of mindlessness. That's an interesting uh, hunting technique. <laughs> so yeah, Hatch, there, there is an amnestic that can get rid of PTSD. Okay. But it's like not recommended because it's but, heavy hitting. But what that also means is that they wouldn't be using that as the main treatment for PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, I think that I think that the psychedelic mushrooms could still have a benefit to the foundation. Yeah. I agree. Anyway, the psychedelics just... are safer than both versions of amnestics that we have spoken about here. As as such, we need to implore the the foundation to see if we can treat the chair's PTSD by planting psychedelics in it. Oh yes, although I think uh, if they did that, they would need to still keep the flowers because the flowers help it feel pretty and useful. Well, yeah. Wait, I wonder. Okay. Get really pretty mushrooms like <laughs> fly amanita. Anyway, before I go on to the SCP, I think, I think I may have remembered how that amnestic was created. It's when they combine three thousands with nine three nines amnestic stuff. Oh, that sounds magically horrifying! I forget what nine three nine is. That with many voices. Uh, the doggos. <laughs> that helps you. <laughs> Yeah, I know that dog goes. <laughs> I should remember that by now, but I'm just glad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. And we get to find out but, how the GOC fucked up. <laughs> but what if I want to keep talking about the ramifications of using psychedelics on the chair? No. Anyway. But we've already spoke a lot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But what if I want to keep speaking? Shut up. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> On with the talk with amnestics and memetic agents. Let's oh, see if the oh, DLC for... gave something else PTSD or did something horrible again. Maybe. Uh, I think those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. That's, that's valid. Anyway. Uh. SCP-1681 is an auditory memetic agent exclusively affecting human beings. SCP-1681 is spread specifically throughout, throughout public gatherings attended by uh, over 1,000 individuals in countries belonging to the former USSR and is capable of spontaneous outbreaks despite joint fe foundation and global co coalition efforts to eradicate it outside of containment. Documentation seized from GRU Division P archives after is still dissolution shows that SCP-1681 was developed by that organization in an effort to influence and control public opinion on the United States. SCP-1681 was first deployed on October 21st, 1982, and far exceeded projected infectivity and auditory memetic countermeasures to SCP-1681 is mentioned in the documentation that does not appear to be effective. It is unknown whether this is because of the flawed design or due to SCP-1681 evolving. SCP-1681 takes the form of a phrase, After all, when actors lead nations, bears will roar. Appended to the end of the anecdote told by individuals, an alpha stage of affection. These anecdotes, anecdotes uh, themselves are not anomalous and do not show a pattern to their subject matter, regardless of their con content. Hosts' anecdotes eventually begin to lose coherency, incorporating references to the United States and corresponding symbolism before terminating in S. SCP-1681 Exposure to SCP-1681 always results in an alpha stage infection. Listeners are, are fully aware of this coordinates of in SCP-1681-1 speech, but attempts to point it out to them results 
in SCP-1681-1 becoming confused and briefly distracted before trying to return to their story. An approximate 48% of SCP-1681-1 move on to the beta stage of infection, while the remainder stay in alpha stage indefinitely spreading SCP-1681. Alpha stage SCP-1681-1 specimens will attend any eligible event to spread SCP-1681, disregarding relative financial expense, travel distance, or prior commitments. Those SCP-1681-1 transiting to beta stage infection will, will withdraw from society, severing all ties to family, loved ones, and associates. During this time, SCP-1681-1 will lapse into prolonged catatonic states, interspersed with brief periods of lucidity. Communication has proven difficult with attempts at conversations derailed by bouts of euphoric hysteria. Specimens in this transverse trans trans fuck all I'm doing about trans transitory stage appear to suffer from mixed aphigia despite this onset of starvation does not occur. It, the trans this trans transitory stage lasts for approximately three to six days, after which SCP-1681-1 will have fully progressed into beta stage. It will then attempt to gain access to the roof of the nearest high or rise building and throw itself off. On impact, a, a beeline or event is initiated. The specimens detained before progressing fully into beta stage will exhibit increase increasingly restless behavior until a Berliner event spontaneously occurs. In a Berliner effect event, an SCP-1681-1 specimen splits into multiple instances of a specific object or animal, which disperse at speeds up to 500 meters per second. The mass and volume of material dispersed does not correspond to that of of the SCP-1681-1 instance triggering the B-liner event. And no traces of SCP-1681-1 are recovered post-event. Material produced during B-liner events does not exhibit anomalous properties. However, the high kinetic energy of such projectiles and occasional presence of mundane con contaminants may pose a significant hazard to the public at large. And there you go. Really confused on that last bit. Like what's what 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 happens after they jump? Uh they in a Berliner event, SCB-1681-1 specimens split into multiple instances of a specific object or animal, which disperse at speeds up to 500 meters per second. They basically break into multiple living beings. That's a, this. I, I'll assume that this is just the result of some uh, arm of the USSR trying to make propaganda and just ha having a rough time of it. Yeah. Uh, how the fuck, again, how the fuck do we classify this? It spreads fast. It yeah. spreads far. I feel like the only way to avoid it is not going to parties. <laughs> I got that covered. <laughs> that and the fact that I'm not in an ex-Soviet Union state. Fair. That's too. fair. So, so, yeah, basically, this is Soviet propaganda that makes, that, that, that comes in the form of a weird phrase, uh, 
and eventually makes the person hate the United States so much that they try to off themselves. But instead of actually succeeding in doing that, they split into random in, into a random animal. Are okay. you okay? Maybe. I'm just very confused. Or like I'm I'm just like trying to think like what like so how many did it say like it's not everyone ends up doing that? It's in fact forty eight percent. Or oh that's still a very worryingly high percent. Uh, again, like I feel I feel like we need an in between between city and certain groups. Because this is like a really large amount of people, but I don't see this destroying a city. It's just going to cause a lot of individuals throughout these countries to turn into random animals. I feel like at the this point, they would no longer be those individuals anymore. What what do you mean? Well, at some point when you're infected enough, how much is really your thoughts and how much is the infection's thoughts? Oh yeah, but didn't it say that like most infections are basically just like like it's literally kind of like the same thing as a uh um incubation period mm -hmm. yeah but i'm not, not talking about that. those i'm talking about everyone who goes past that well yeah but like those individuals like that's what i'm talking about those individuals are like uh -huh. the only ones severely and noticeably affected by it but i mean it's still a very significant number of people oh, but yeah. it's not like going to cause the collapse of a city or a nation so like what what the what the fuck do we do with this uh, i guess i guess you could say that like it's it it can easily cause like the death of a city's worth of people could put it like that and justify putting it in city. I think I'll just go with that. It's just put it in city. Yeah, makes sense. It's kind of hard to place it. Yeah, it's it's like one of those really weird ones. All right, everyone, you ready for the next SCP picture though? Yeah, and like I would, like that's the thing. My first inclination when we hit one of those weird ones is put it in world changing, but I don't know. I feel like this doesn't reach that grandiose. Why is there just a random ass country house on my screen? That's the next SCP. <laughs> okay. Well, then either way, let's continue. Yeah. Alright, the next SCP is SCP-1684, also known as Viral Reality. Alright. SCP-1684 is a phenomenon affecting homes being sold by Earth Home Re Reality Corporation. Earth Home Reality is a real estate firm based in San Francisco, California and founded in 1995. Once a civilian successfully purchases a home affected by SCP-1684, anomalous properties will manifest within 30 days. At this point, the subject, will, along with their personal possessions and furniture, will spontaneously vanish from the home. Monitoring systems observing, observing this process reveal that, that it is instantaneous. 
the home will then revert to to its pre-sale condition. At this point, the home will be returned on the scale. All right, hold on. At this point, the home will be returned to sale on the open market under Perth Home Real Realty. In addition, if the house house previously occupied by the subject has yet to be sold, its sale will be transferred to Perth Home Re Reality as well. Legal paperwork automatically adjusts for these conditions to occur. Homes sold by Hearth Home Real Real Realty are sold for much lower commissions than competitive real estate firms. Although these prices are not paranormally low, they are often deciding. God damn it. Uh, an often deciding factor for additional subjects to buy SCP-1684 affected houses. There you go, guys. That's that's it. It's just a ha houses that eat people, apparently, and furniture. That, that ain't eating people. That's all to foreign them. And even better, uh, we've got a, 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 a real estate company that has created the most incredibly over-the-top scammy but effective business model in the world. <laughs> you know, pe pe people buy the place, okay, they like it, they go in, they bought it for cheaper than it would normally go on other places. So, you know, like they're, they're going to buy from this place more often. And then they're there for a while. And then they get fucking alt f board from reality. And yeah. you just throw the building back up on the market. Yeah, actually, it gets even funnier. What? Uh, the MTF force that's on the case constantly, MTF Omega-3, also known as I Hate Pacifism. What? What's that code name? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And hold on, but it gets even better. Hatchet, MTF Omega Three was deployed to to the site to pacify the subjects via non-lethal tranquilizer darts. <laughs> They're trying I, to I don't think that's them. what works. I don't think that's how it works. I, I, I think they have problems with pass, pacifying people. <laughs> I, I, I don't get the joke at this point. I was getting, I was getting the joke because the MTF group is called I Hate Pacifism, and they're being sent to pacify. That's not what pacifism is. Is it not? Pacifism no. means abstaining from violence. Oh. If they're going to pacify someone, then they are necessarily engaging in some amount of violence based upon the context. This is just thematic to their name. Yeah. They just hate pacifism. <laughs> you never... How how do you not know the meaning of pacifism? Shut up. I don't. How I can't just think of this. Bright tends to not know quite a few obvious things. Accept it and move on. Well, that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't help me. I'm baffled. Well, what's obvious to some people isn't to others. You just gotta accept faults and non-faults. I've known about the term pacifism since before I, I can even remember, but my mom was also a Buddhist, so that's one of the core, like, things you learn. The only thing is, is this, like, really fully dangerous? Because, like, if you get out before the 30 days, you're fine. Who the f- Bright? Yeah. If you just bought a house, mm -hmm. you're not le leaving in you're thirty not days or less. In thirty days less. <laughs> what if you don't like the house? 
Generally speaking, when someone decides to leave a building like that, it's for a reason more than just, I don't like the house. It tends to come down to some other reasons. And most of the time, those reasons show up outside of the length of fucking month. Yeah. Yeah. So point being we've got a uh we've got a San Francisco based uh uh realty firm that has the best business model on the planet. Uh no one can compare. I'd say certain groups. <laughs> Cuz it's not all the time and it's just it's literally just the handful of people who purchase from this specific firm. <laughs> Yeah, the, it's just that's we just like you know what? Fuck this firm. <laughs> no, the the SCP's like I'm going to help this firm have one of the best business models in the country. <laughs> if all we care about is profits rather than I don't know ethics, what's the point of ethics under capitalism? If all we care about is profits, then this is easily the best business model I've ever heard of. All right. Uh, you I sell, said, oh, yes, you, you sell something to someone, they 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 enjoy it. They probably leave a good review about your service. They get fucking deleted from reality, and you immediately sell it again. Yeah. All right. I have now sent a picture of SCP sixteen ninety eight in stream planning. I feel conflicted. I feel very conflicted. Why? Because on one hand, she looks like she wants to eat me and not in the fun way. But on the other hand, she's attractive. God damn it, Hatchet. So what do I do? Alright. This SCP is SCP-1698, also known as You Can't Get There From Here. SCP-1698 is a phenomenon affecting three buildings, a 12-story hotel in Redacted USA, a two-story building house in Redacted France, and a five-story office building in Redacted Brazil. The phenomenon affects these buildings such that none of them can successfully be approached by land. Although they can be seen, all attempts to reach them by foot or land vehicle result in encountering obstacles such as intervening buildings, extensive road damage and attendant construction, gridlock traffic, dead ends and road closures, and thick and impassable vegetation. Of note that is that it is possible to navigate to locations immediately adjacent to these buildings, but invariably some independent, some impedient uh, will prevent anyone from actually Approaching the affected buildings themselves. All three buildings can be successfully be approached by air, and MTF agents introduced by helicopter have discovered that there is no dis discernible abnormalities inside the buildings themselves, aside from the expected amount of neglect resulting from <laughs> long term lack of human presence. They further report that it is possible to exit the buildings at the ground level, but as soon as they no longer have direct view of the ground floor of the building, it again becomes impossible to locate. Researchers installed on site uh, have not been able to detect any spatial anomalies or perceptual hazards, and O5 Command has tentatively Approve the usage of these sites for a long-term usage, uh, or long-term storage, sorry, of infrequently accessed non-digital financial and adm administrative paperwork. SCP-1698 was discovered in August 2010 when the Intelligence Office identified multiple simultaneous online 
complaints from the customers, employees, and residents, residents of the affected buildings, all were reporting the effects of SCP-1698. The Foundation has confirmed these reports, and within five months, they had purchased all three buildings and surrounding locations via shell companies. That's the description. Wait, so then where does the where does the cute where where does where does the cute murder lady come in? Alright, well there is one addendum and only one. So okay. if this addendum doesn't have to do with the cute murder lady, I am going to be extremely pissed. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, addendum on April 17th, 2012, the areas affected by SCP-1698 expanded such that it is now no longer possible to locate or approach any location within 37 meters of the buildings originally affected. Additionally, two more affected uh, locations were subsequently identified since centered around a small municipal park in redacted Australia and an abandoned warehouse in redacted Spain. A third location which appeared on the state was found to be an instance of SCP-2449. The significance of its concurrent manifestation is unknown. During the expansion event, 131 non-Foundation individuals were in the new affected areas consisting of 37 pedestrians, 78 people inside buildings, and 16 individuals inside vehicles. All found themselves unable to ex exit the area they, went, they were in due to the inability to approach any area that would be considered separate. Instances that pedestrians could walk along sideways but could not enter buildings. Uh, hold on, I lost my place. Uh, I found it separate. Or not enter, enter buildings or step off the curb, and individuals inside buildings could not utilize exterior doors. Attempts to evacuate trapped individuals by helicopter uniformly result as a failure to the individuals to reach the ladders due to intervening events such as event. Oh wait, so hold on. Intervening events such as such as sudden extreme inclement weather or the ladders becoming entangled in trees or power lines. SCB-1698 has been upgraded to containment class heater, while until such time it can be determined how to predict, prevent, and prepare. Uh, wait, hold on. Determine how to predict, prevent, mitigate, or reverse SCP-1698's expansion events. There we go. That's the addendum. Where does the cute murder lady come from? I don't know. That is a good question. It's probably an OC. Uh, You've got an OC instead of... What? Well, it was one, not that... a proper picture! For one. Was... I looked at the number, picked it up, and it placed it in file. <laughs> okay? That's probably the only one that wasn't like that, because most of the pictures that I got were from the articles themselves. Did you, like, were were you not able to go to the article itself and pick up a picture? There's no picture for this article. Damn. Sorry, right. Hatchet, but there's no murder lady for you. Damn it. What picture are you going to use then? Because you can't use the OC. It has nothing to do with SCP. Well, it does have the number, so I'm just going to leave it there. Well, yeah, but 
there's well, another I, I thing can't... that has a picture that's that literally looks like the Russian version of 1698. I know, but I'll change it later. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, so, but so based upon there not being the cute murder lady, uh, I I would say that this is just certain groups because while it's obviously a pain in the ass trying to deal with this shit, it's as of right now not going to cause any significant. Harm. Yeah, that's fair. It's literally just going to like so far. It's literally just occasionally showed up elsewhere and made a bunch of people confused as to why they can't exit a building they're in. Or exit an area they're in. Yeah. I'm sad. Uh. Words, words cannot properly describe my disappointment. So, uh, I, I had to put the next picture in spoiler. That's all. Clicky, clicky! Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a statue. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What am I looking at? <laughs> That's a the statue SCP. of a person that looks like they have uh, gotten ready to fall. This is this is this is my new favorite image. <laughs> <laughs> he looks he looks like an incredibly depressed statue. It's like a statue version of just hang in there only instead of being an adorable kitten it looks like a depressed old man that looks like he's definitely gonna fall <laughs> he's so casual too he's got his hand in his pocket <laughs> he's just chilling there <laughs> okay i like this i like this new tradition of you showing us the photos yeah also this isn't one of the keters, but three. Uh, the one of the numbers before the keter one we're about to read, it its nickname is the human fetus composite. Ah! Okay. Uh, I mean, no. Uh, excuse me. It's pronounced composite. Shut up. I'd like to speak to your manager. I am the manager. No, you're not. You're the manager. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's the manager. No. I'd like to speak to Jerry. Wait, I'm going to use that whenever Karen no. talks to me. Like, I'll speak, take me to your manager, and I'll be like, you're the manager. <laughs> you're the manager. I quit. Get out of here. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, but anyway. No, nah, even no, even better. Like you're not even actually an employee there. You're just a guy. You're just a person in line. And then the the Karen walks up. I'd like to speak to your manager. And then just completely irrelevant person next to the Karen goes, "You're the manager." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just completely confused them. <laughs> oh. Anyway. The next mate, next SCP is SCP seven twelve seventeen twelve, an unusual occurrence on August eleventh nineteen fifty nine. Wait, that's the title of the SCP. Yep. Okay. All right. SCP-1712 is a collective designation for two anomalous objects which manifested as the result of an unexplained event. Despite various attempts at recreating the event utilizing SCP-1712-B and subjects similar to SCP-1712-A, the Foundation was not successfully created another SCP-1712 event. SCP-1712-A is a petrified body of one Richard Boyd, a citizen of Chicago, Illinois, in addition to half of the Iron Beam. 
Currently, it is located at the outer rim of the solar system and it is moving at a rate of about 20 kilometers per hour with its speed increasingly or increasing exponentially. SCP-1712-A is expected to reach observable range within five years. It is currently unknown if Void possessed anomalous properties prior to becoming SCP-1712-2. Oh, wait, SCP-1712-A. That's wrong. Alright, anyway. SCP-1712-B is a tabby kitten with black and white fur. It weighs 8 kilograms and displays behavior expected for a cat of its age. When SCP-1712-B uh, makes contact with living tissue, the tissue will immediately transform into stone. This transformation occurs uh, instantaneously and will also affect non-organic matter. The subject is making direct contact with, such as clothing, held objects, and the ground beneath them. This effect appears to extend about a meter in diameter from the closest source of the formerly living tissue, SCP-1712-B, has not been noted to age during its lifetime in containment. And there you go, there's the description. It's the whole- Wait, then how- Wait! <laughs> okay, so there, we've got a Medusa cat that apparently- Medusified this guy from Chicago. What the fuck caused him to be? At... Well, it says through. right at, at the at, it says right at under where Bright stopped reading. No, <laughs> Bright. What? Keep reading. No, uh, well, I'm pa taking pictures and sending them in discords. I actually can't read it, so I, I can read it. Don't worry, I'm take, taking pictures so you can read it. Wait, is it? Wait, it's TOS? What? No, 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 no. It's just really small font. It like hurts my eyes. Oh, that's weird. It doesn't look like small font where I am. Can't you I zoom in? A screenshot. Have you have you ever used the zoom in function on your on Does your browser? Does that help? Oh, I've still got the man on my screen. I... Here, I'll, here for a change, I'll read this bit. Oh, I was just about to send pictures. Uh, I I can read what Jerry said. Wait, why does your site look different from mine, Jiri? I don't know. Are you what? zoomed out on your browser? No, hold on. Look at my... Look at mine compared to Jiri's. Hold on. Look at mine compared to Jiri's. Well, what's the what you have, side? Of... Oh, you have more stuff. Yeah. Uh, Jerry's using a different site. Yeah. Oh, are you using SCP Wiki or a different site? It says the SCP Foundation. Yeah, it's the dash SCP dot foundation. Yeah, I think that's not the actual wiki. Yeah. Uh... Then I guess, Bright, go ahead and read. Uh, if I can. Oh, wait, if I, if I put it in pictures, it, it gets bigger. Okay, so that's a bit helpful. <laughs> but also, like, couldn't you have just, like, used the zoom function on your, on your browser? No. What do you mean, no? Because I'm not using my computer. You're not using your computer? No. 
Ah. Uh, that would explain wait, but, the small font commentary. Wait, but then can't you just like do do the outward pinch? Like like put two points and then try to zoom in? Eh. Well, let me test this if it... No. Oh, no. No, because when I do the pinch thing, it goes, oh, you want to go to a different tab. No, I don't want to go to a different tab. How the fuck? What? Okay, your phone's on crack. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Let's just, just go ahead and read. I have to know how this man ended up in the outermost reaches of the solar system. Uh, article UE-1721. Event description. On the morning of August 11th, 1959, Richard Boyd was wor working in his office when he witnessed witnesses say he noted a cat on the construction area and attempted to crawl out onto the construction area to rescue it. Against the advice of others, after contacting the cat, Richard immediately lost his balance, fell, and vanished from sight. Date of Occurrence August 11, 11, 1959 Location, Chicago, Illinois, United States Follow-up action taken MTF Kappa 11, aka Red Bearings was mobilized to track Richard Boyd's location, but were not able to track it after it exit, exited the operating range of their aircraft. Foundation personnel were able to recover the involved feline and administered Class B and MS-6 to all witnesses. The cover story of a auto-homicide was decim decimated. Boy's supervisor, Michael Margillis, was interviewed to obtain information on the subject. A transcript of the interview has been attached below. Update. November 22nd, 1961. Visual contact with Richard Boyd has been reestablished using satellite imagery due to the ongoing nature of this anomaly. SCP object classification is currently pending. So... By falling off in a construction site, he got instantly teleported into space. I don't know what it sounds like because he started... Okay, the wording of that made me think that the jets, like the planes, were tracking him for a bit and then they lost him. Yeah, that was what happened. Okay, so he he fell, the, the, the cat turned him to stone... He fell, and he started rapidly gaining speed and shooting all over the place until eventually exiting Earth's atmosphere and ending up at the outermost reaches of the solar system. I don't think that's a friendly cat. What the fuck did that cat do? I think, like, that's the thing. This seems to be that something that the cat just doesn't... Like, the cat's just a normal cat. It just so happens that this cat also turns things to stone and can apparently do that. <laughs> I, I am positive it is not a normal cat. Well, no, like, it, it, it was described as, like, having all of the behaviors of a normal cat of its appeared age. It, like, it, in every other respect, it is a normal cat. It just can do that. That's... Hmm. So, like, the cat really can't be blamed. The cat's just being a cat. But for some reason, <laughs> the cat causes this. I don't... Where? Yeah. Where the f the, the, I'm looking at the conversation. It's just them talking about what they've... What we just read, really. But ma mainly, Margillis is just getting angry at the cat. <laughs> I would love to hear it. Yeah. Let's let's hear about the cat. Let's hear about a guy getting angry at the cat. Interviewed Michael Margillis, sales department lead, Chicago Meat Packaging Ltd. Interviewer, field agent, 
Valdez. Forward Adrian Valdez interviewed Margulis under the guise of a Chicago Police Department investigator to obtain as much knowledge on a UE-1721 as possible. Again, Law. Thank you for agreeing to this interview on su such short notice, Mr. Margulis. It's no problem, Detective. I'm fixing... I'm fixing to figure out what happened just as much as anybody. Smoke? No, thank you. Of course, Detective. Now, what can I do for you? I'd like to ask you to describe the event in, to the best of your memory. I don't reckon my story is any different from anyone else else's. But here it goes. We filed our sales reports on Tuesdays, so all the guys were out there earlier today. Everything was normal till I hear... Wilkins and Roberts yelling after Boyd. I assume you left this office at this point? Right on the money, detective. I go outside to check on the ruckus, and I see him out on the first window you pass before coming in here. He's doing a balancing act out on those beams all, of the, all for a damn cat. Anyways, the wind just so happens to blow the little... A little stronger than it was, and Margillo slams his desk. Kaput! Gone! I think the cat fell off, too. An on-site investigator n noticed that a chunk of the beam was he was walking on was missing as well. He didn't hear a thud or anything like that. Buddy, I trust those union builders as much as, as far as I can throw them. That beam was probably made of plastic. Wouldn't surprise me if poor old boy hit his flea bag and so-called beam wound up in that in the river. Do you suspect the construction workers at all? Nah, they're honest people trying to make a living. It's a threat. Those union organizers and their piece of shit protests that get under my skin. Those damn unions, I tell you. Right, I have a few more questions for you, Mr. Margulis. Apologies, Detective. It's been a strange day. It's not every day a man vanishes literally in thin air. Ah, uh, hell, excuse me, you were saying, Detective? Now, I would just like to ask you a few questions uh, about Mr. Boyd. Did he get along well with his co-workers? Any abnormalities in his behavior as, as of late? No, not that I can think of. He got along fine with other guys but he's always been one of those quiet ones didn't smoke or drink either uh, and if his performance well he's always made quota never really excelled but never really fell behind his pack either if anything he was reliable what about his personal life has he ever talked about a family or anything of that nature in the 10 years he's worked here he had he ain't ever brought up a gal or any kids. He's only been taking a few personal days and been sick a few times. He must, he must have parents, but he ain't ever mentioned them. You figure they're dead? We're looking into that. One more question, if you will. Fire away. Was it in Boy's character to put himself in danger like that? Hell no. He was as meek as they came. He had a real soft spot for cats, though. Every now and then I would catch him find him feeding the strays by the dumpster and he always he always be tearing up and sniffing i think he had one of those what do you call them allergies yeah that's it well thank you f oh wait it was only one time he got mad at the cat he spoke more more about how he hated you than how he hated the cat. Yeah, he, he yeah, just like spoke this... really hated unions. Also, but... <laughs> union builders are fine. Their equipment is fine. The material is fine. God damn. It's just... What? He's... He's angry about the unions doing their thing. And then somehow that translates to... The metal beam is made out of plastic. Well, back love... then in the 1950s, there was a lot of propaganda against the unions. 
Actually, what I'm talking, what am I talking about? That shit has come back stronger than ever. It's just now it's not legal to uh, hire people to beat the shit out of norm of out of the union workers. I yeah. mean, point point being, one I love like there was no new information gained from that log, but. I just love the fact, like, I, I genuinely want to commend the writer for that. Is like in that short bit of time, you can, like, you can so easily, just like, completely understand this guy. Yeah, that's 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 good character writing there. But 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 besides that, um, what the fuck do we do with this cat? Where <laughs> we put the cat? <laughs> The cat that sends people to space. <laughs> well, the thing, they like, only did that to one cat. person. The cat's harmless. Besides yeah, for like, that one person. Well, the cat, like, still turns things around it to stone. Oh, but, that's, that's fair. But, like, the, again, like, for the SCP Foundation, that's practically nothing to deal with. Yeah. I feel I, like this would be certain groups, since you can't get near the cat. Anyone that gets near the cat, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's. I, I mean, at this point, maybe we should just say only one because there's only one guy that had issues. Yeah. Well, to be fair, if a bunch of people go up to the cat, that's probably a lot of new stone statues. It's like Medusa's pet cat. You know, it'd be really fucked yeah. up if the guy is still alive. Don't say that. Let's, Don't let's say not, that. Let's not think about that. Let's just. <laughs> So let's just imagine while the statue of him is somewhere in space, let's just imagine he's not alive. Hey, don't let's imagine he's not alive. Okay. How the fuck would that even work? This it is the SCP universe. That he would be in an eternal stasis where he might or might not be conscious while in the stasis state. It's I mean... not what I said. I know we're gonna eventually go to it. I mean, but there is this key. Well, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure if it actually is Keter, but there's this anomaly that's like literally puts you in a void, and you lose all your senses. Uh, is it the the prison um, one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so being in space as a stone statue and still being alive can still very well happen in the SCP universe. That... I hi Those are not correlated in the slightest. What I'm saying is this, like... Uh, logic can be broken in the SCP universe. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that we just... just start breaking lo logic willy-nilly randomly. Well, it's 50-50, like, they're alive or dead. Let's just put it at that. No, it's not 50-50, no, no, they're no, alive or dead. No. That's Let's... not how that works. Just because you... <laughs> right, just because you can think of a possibility does not mean that it is a likely possibility. Can we just... just? I know it might not be true, but can we just assume he's dead? He might be alive, but let's assume he's dead, because otherwise, if he one day comes back and one day unstones, then that would mean everyone... Really, Chew? Let, just... Let me just get rid of this alarm. Really, Chew? I guess that's good timing. Anyway, <laughs> ignoring that, uh... Alarm. What? If he was alive and he one day became no longer stone, literally everyone he ever knew would already be dead. Yeah. Oh. I think the point I'm trying to get across is this is a stupid line of reasoning that Bright just pulled out of her ass. There's there's no reason to presume this or even think about this. It's just Bright randomly goes, what if she's alive? And then starts pulling numbers out of her ass. I mean, well, wait. 
Wait, I noticed something that's even weirder to being turned to stone and still being alive. There's this SCP that literally puts where where they make you put a diver suit on and your whole body becomes water. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. So <laughs> Well no, water except for the teeth and the eyes. Yeah, except for the teeth and eyes. If you take the suit off, you're dead. Yeah. So let's just all come in agreement that nothing in the SCP universe fully makes any sense. <laughs> well, no, actually, there's quite a bit that fully makes sense because it's it, it, it's be, it operates on our logic and then subverts it with anomalies. Yeah, our our existing world's logic. It. it <sighs> I am not becoming Matt Pat. Fuck that, Chew. I mean, you're basically doing that when you just like, but what if he's alive? It's a 50-50 <laughs> chance that he's alive in there. Well, technically, if you read on the foundation page on that SCP, it does sound like that he's very likely alive in there. Wait, seriously? I just well, think about it. Uh, everything else that has been uh, affected by the kitten was alive and fine. So think wait, about that. Wait, everything else that... You're saying that they were able to demonstrate that the things the cat turned to stone were alive. Well, they. I don't think the cat... It, I don't think they said the cat turned them totally to stone. Probably meant that either with time away from the cat... Or uh, that it was just a small portion of them, or something like that. Either oh, yeah, way, but that's 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 ultimately quite a bit different from the entire body and the brain turning to stone. Well, like I said, they didn't say whether the experiments involved an entire person being turned into stone, besides the one person, or like other things like that. Either way, it showed that thing that the subjects are fine is this now just becoming a debate over whether or not the person in, in, as a stone you know statue is alive or dead like let's just assume he's dead let's just assume he's dead i i'm i'm holding to the position that it makes no sense to assume that he's not dead based upon current information uh, like, I I, I don't think the SCP Foundation can, like, I, I highly doubt that those experiments included them somehow confirming that completely turned to stone organisms are perfectly fine I will after admit contact with the cat. He, it, I'll admit it, he, that one guy sounds like the only subject that has not returned to flesh which means others were probably only partially turned yeah. yeah like basically what i'm trying to say is he's probably okay how about yeah let's put it this way if he's alive he's completely unconscious and there's no signs of him being unstoned that's the that's not what i meant but whatever yeah stoned. He's not going to Well, it would be very nice soon. to get his stone statue butt from outer space and back into Earth atmosphere so we could study it. But wait, what if him being in space is the thing that's keeping him from turning back into a human? Are in that case, it's still better to bring him back, but still. I don't want. Now you're bringing up. Oh my gosh. All right, I know how to I know how to free uh, free him from space. What you need to do is get a missile, fire Mikey, it, and have it explode the statue. That might be alive. Fire below a uh, fire behind no! the statue so it gets flung back to Earth. <laughs> That's not how you treat people. <laughs> A non-statue, 
and you accidentally blew his hand off for then he would bleed to death. <laughs> I mean, you can chance get a medical one. attention. Yeah, that's the chance I'm willing to take. Well, yeah, but then he would need that medical attention after going through Earth's atmosphere and surviving. Yeah. <laughs> like, he starts unstoning and he's like, all right, let's go on. Wait, wait, no. <laughs> he just hit me to go through the surface of the Earth. I just wanted to help a cat and now I got to no longer having a hand. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Why am I falling into Earth's atmosphere? I wasn't this high up. <laughs> Chu says hands are overrated. You know what? Let's just let's just pretend like he's probably dead and continue and just pretend this conversation never happened. He's probably I mean, dead. Right. Is it is it pretending if I already think that he's probably dead or effectively dead? That's realistic. Alright, All right, so here's the next uh picture for next SCP. What? Cat, what are you doing? Why are why am I looking at a bunch of big big math equations? That's what the next SCP is. Math? Uh, math? Maybe. Uh, uh, math is an SCP. I can get behind there's this. Like a, there are several math SCPs. Oh, give me a minute. I need to placate the beast. No. I'm sorry. You have to wait for the beast to be placated. Cats are that way. Oh, no. I don't mean the cats. I mean shoe. Oh. <laughs> Anyway. Hello. Hello. Twitch. Would you would you like to function? Yeah. Anyway. Alright. That's what we're talking about. It's SCP seventeen fourteen. Also known as the Parsimonious physicist. Wait a minute. Bright bright pats chew. Jerry bonks chew. And then I start patting chew. Damn it, chew. Okay, chew. I patted you after you were bonked. here more pads right what the fuck is your problem <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> why, why why do you like this <laughs> because she's bright anyway are we ready define ready no. Then I guess I'm not ready. Right. SCP-1714 is a partially finished mathematical proof, identified as largely sound by Foundation math mathematicians attempting to create a mathematical framework for the, the analysis of reality-altering anomalies. SCP-1714 postulates a quantum mechanical model for such objects arising from the co coalescence of virtual particles generated from quant what quantum foam. <laughs> Among SCP-1714's most more important sections is a lemma proving the existence of reality bending anomalies as a natural cons consequence of the boundary co conditions of of the universe the lemma predicts the prevalence of redacted alterations in reality as understood by mainstream sci science with only redacted known percent known to 
and contained by the foundation. Foundation's mathematicians and theoretical physicists have reached the conclusion that SV1714 in its entirety could be applied to the creation and manipulation of reality altering anomalies by parties of sufficient technological advancement. At seemingly random intervals in the text of SCP-1714 are a series of warnings railing against the complexity of the observable universe and expressing a desire to reconstruct the universe into a form too simple to sustain it. <laughs> These writings vary in tone from clinical to an explanatory to barely coherent and seem to indicate that at least a suspicion of the existence of the Foundation. Excerpts from SCP-1714 I was told by those who lacked vision that knowing all would be impossible. It's, sim it's simpler than they just thought. Alright, no, right, it, it was simpler than they thought. And needn't obey this tricky enemy. We need to cut it down into size. We hope, we hope you have, we, we, all right, hold on. we hope we have already proven to the reader that the universe is far more fantastic place than modern science has accounted for. That such self referential self-nullifying physical laws exist is incredible. In the next section, we prove that these laws can, in fact, be un understood and even manipulated. The author realizes the potential danger of releasing this information, as such could be as much could be abused with impunity. What you must you mustn't worry. I'm going to fix it. Shh. Everything will be all right. The universe that speaks to me through the myth. It speaks. And an unvotulated babble. Where is the beauty I was promised? Where is the music of the heavens? There is no music here, only the discord of many voices. So, hmm. uh, uh, certain lines must be cut out. The crowd must become an, an ensemble. The ensemble must become a, a quartet. The quartet must become a, a trio. The trio must become uh, must become one long voice rising high and pure. So I, the listener, may hear and take delight. Considering a vast number of of ouroboric anomalies we provided we reproved do exist in the section above. We must wonder if if they do not serve a purpose, the author is not given a te teleological modes of thought, but we have demonstrated clear, clearly that reality warping and always seem to be a natural consequence of the laws of the, in the universe. It seems to us strange that those same needed previously Flared laws to also provide our liberation. Yet again, it reveal a kennel of wisdom. Wisdom out for for out of formless, terrible chaos comes universal protection. And the final note: it will be purified, all of it, shake the through the senses. Uh, of my sleeves and rendered into its most perfect essence into the beginning and the end the glorious singularity statics scarred you know and I was becoming you know I was 
uh, well, and I beholding its glory, understanding all, knowing all forever. That's it. Sounds like, yeah. My head hurts. What I can basically describe is that this SCP can be used as a weapon. I... The only way I know to describe what this sounds like to me mm -hmm. is this sounds like someone in the Elder Scrolls series who spent their entire life staring at a goddamn Elder Scroll. And they fucking lost their brain to it. Damn. Where the fuck do we put this? It's I... literally just a math equation. I don't know. Like, at this point, is this even an SCP? I mean, it's it's a book that shows how to create reality-altering things. Did it say that it's a book how to create them, or is it just... Like, from what I heard, it was just a mathematical equation that demonstrated that reality benders it is... would... Uh, attempting to create a mathematical framework for the analysis of reality altering anomalies. Can you repeat that? All right. Uh, attempting to create a mathematical framework for the analysis of reality altering anomalies. Okay, yeah, that's not creating anomalies. Okay. It's creating a mathematical framework. To understand them with. Yeah, but if this book is in the wrong hands. So, I... I honestly don't see what this book getting in the wrong hands would do. It's literally just a math equation. Like, it's, it's an equation that says... Based upon these maths reality benders exist and should exist within expected parameters that that's it this doesn't give anyone the ability to create reality benders it's literally just a math equation like it's it's not like one of those others where like if you create like if you do the math equation something weird happens it's just this is a math equation. That's a fair point. It's not even a math equation to help you find the reality vendor. It's literally just this equation shows that reality benders exist. That that's it. That's all it does. I don't I honestly don't see why this would be an SCP. Oh. Let alone why it would be a Keter. Is it? Is there something else that we're missing because you didn't read every, every part of the article? Uh, no, uh, well, there was a log where they tried to create it, an anomaly using the book. Did, Did not it... go well. Did not go well. Did they create an anomaly? Uh, there were casualties. <laughs> they created an anomaly using it and bad things happened okay and oh and the person who changed it uh was up uh, to uh from its regular class of east or, like i think it was euclid to keter was the o5 council that means this SCP is purposely leaving out details. Yeah, because 
Yeah, because there are test logs of them trying to create stuff with it, and it does not go well. Okay, so... I guess that kind of makes sense. Having the having the equation on hand could be used as a framework to analyze and then be used to create SCPs using the framework built up from it. Yeah, that's why I, I said it could be used as a weapon, in a way. But I guess, again, like, this is just... Oh, yeah. In that case, I don't understand how it's a keter. Well, we... Like, I even... Kind of like, like what if you make the wrong SCP? Oh, well, yeah, but, like, classifications like this generally aren't based on speculation. It's based upon, like, observable reasons why this is trying to get out of the box. It's trying constantly, and it does consistently get out of the box. Then there's probably this... things the O5 Council isn't saying about it. Oh well, yeah, but we're judging this based upon what we have in front of us. There. Like, could there be more to this? I don't fucking know, but I mean, it's possible. But as of right now, all I'm hearing is a math equation. <laughs> And even then, I would still argue that this wouldn't be an SCP, because this is just a math equation pertaining to SCPs. Like, E equals MC squared does not... It is not a math equation that creates the outcome of the... I forgot what E equals MC squared was. Uh, I, I forgot what that uh, equation demonstrates, but you, you get my gist. Like, using that equation yeah. can lead to an outcome, but that doesn't mean that that equation is that outcome. Yeah. So, uh... so, like, and on top of that, like, Keter classification, it's, like, is this, like, a a bunch of books that are in circulation or is this just a single book a single Cause book. The, yeah because in the sound of it, it's a single book in which case you put the book in a box and it's not going to get out of the box and especially if the o5 is worried about it they're going to have that guarded yeah like literally they can just like uh though so, hatchet you're gonna love this at the end of the First experiment gone wrong. The last thing that was said was, "Damn it, damn it! I knew it. Goddamn vulture capitalists and their bitch engineers. The entire damn device has to be gutted. Damn it." That is <laughs> that is certainly a string of sentences <laughs> or string of words. And I just see what under it. The remainder of the log contains random characters consistent with the pattern of someone pounding a keyboard with clenched fist. <laughs> someone was really pissed off that it didn't go well. <laughs> uh. So you're thinking like reassigned? I would say reassign. Yeah, this. It's literally just a math equation. I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's just a concept. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? That's a good way to put it. It's a concept. Concepts on their own as they exist in, in a vacuum are in no way harmful on their own. It's how someone takes that concept oh, yeah. that can cause harm. Kind of like the Scarlet King. What? The Scarlet King is a concept. That's the final law to the Scarlet King. He is a concept. That's why he was changed from Keter to safe. Because the more you talk about him and the more you fear him, the stronger he gets. Hmm. The so, less yeah. you fear him, the less you think about him, the weaker he is. Yeah. He's, he's he is a concept. Oh wait, in that case, then 
wouldn't he already have been really fucking weak considering the fact that only people within the foundation would know about him? That's... More people knew him before then. Yeah, the Sarkic they cults. They were able to. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, Sarkic cults. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the CP Foundation is pretty good at like dimming those people down, but they still exist out there. Oh yeah, and I also forgot another organization that did stuff with the Scarlet King, the Chaos Insurgency. Uh. I got you. Gotta love that chaos insurgency over there, being morally bankrupt pieces of shit in the corner there. You, oh wait, wait, Hatchet. Do you know how the chaos insurgency was formed? I vaguely do. I think you told me before. Basically, there were like O five council member. Yeah, one O five council member and their bodyguards decided. Fuck this. We're fucking up the world. We're leaving. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just like what, like one, one o five council member just really, really, really wanted to be all for one. Yeah. <laughs> so he just he just nopes the fuck out and starts using all this crazy shit to try to fuck up the world. Yeah. But yeah, I wasn't thinking concept in terms of the Scarlet King. Scarlet King. I'm thinking or concept in reality. <laughs> like, mm. um, uh, what's, what's the best example? I can think of? The concept of violence. Like, violence on its own is just a natural aspect of reality. Mm-hmm. It's what you take that concept and do with it that shapes shapes whether or not it's a problem or not. Right. Like, is is violence being used to fight against oppression? Then it's being used in a manner that's positive. Is violence being used to engage in oppression? In oppression? Then it's being used in a negative light. Violence right. itself isn't the thing that is bad, it's how people use violence that is the bad. Uh -huh. And this is all very hypothetical in Minecraft, which don't come after me. <laughs> Jeff Bezos says all violence is bad, except for the violence we inflict upon our slaves. My mom's yelling at a cat. Oh, wow. What? For the first, uh, for part one, we only have one, two, three, four. Wait, hold on. Let me count first. Four. Then I'll say something. One, two, three, four. I love silent streams. We only have uh what looks like to be fifty nine left for part one. How many parts are there? Uh, we barely made a dent, Hatchet. We're only in the 1,000s. There's yeah, 7,000. <laughs> so, yeah, we didn't hit a dent. <laughs> How are you even divvying up the parts? Uh, I can't add... I actually can't add any more pictures. So I have to create a whole new tier list. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. With all these same tiers? Yeah. Uh, however, I will show you the picture of the next next SCP. I have an idea. What? You can move all the pictures instead of using this tier list. You could technically use a Google document. If you use the right type, you would be able to 
all the classifications and all those pictures. I'm lazy. Right. <laughs> Honestly, that this would be in a this would be an amount of work where it's like I I wouldn't blame Bright to go the lazy route. That's, that's fair. Anyway, like here. these are like how many how many images are on the screen? Oh Jesus, I don't even know. Like, wait, what's the name of this one? Uh, reassigned to XK class Keter rating. No, 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 no. I mean the picture you sent. Oh, SCP seventeen seventeen, aka Green Acres. I feel like I've heard of this one. This image looks familiar. Well, yeah, I guess that's... Uh... <laughs> Wait, when... I... Okay, before I, I switch over to stream ending, because it's past 1130, uh, I see one of the SCPs, which is called SCP-1728, Buttery Decapitated Highway Man. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's enough information processed by my brain today. So there's someone just like decapitated dude who's been covered in butter. My head really hurts. I think I've had enough talk today. That's fair. Yeah, things are about done with. Yeah. Hey, Hatcher, you won't have to worry about the Resident Evil streams being short. Okay. Because I, I, I won't have work the next day for those streams. So, yeah. Okay. I wasn't, like... Like, that's the... Like, I don't know how much Resident Evil I can play before I get bored of it. That's fair. So, like, I don't fucking know. Right. We should probably have, like, a backup game we can play. Unless oh. we want to just end stream the second my brain's like, nope, I'm done shooting zombies. Well, I got, I didn't finish Fears the Fathom episode two. True. Yeah. Anyway, good tired. night. Uh, good night, Jerry. Good night, Jerry. Wait, oh fuck. Oh well, I guess it's just well, two now. Bookworm, if you're here, give us final like work on final words. I haven't seen Bookworm typing, but there's two people in chat, so I'm guessing Bookworm's probably lurking. Bookworm, if you're here, give us a sign. Is Jerry gay? Alright, why are you streaming your Twitch? Oh shit, I forgot I was, I was still on Discord again. <laughs> God damn it, I got added for an NFT tweet again. How do I make it stop? Do you mean the uh, thing that we did? Yeah, how do they make it stop? Weren't you here when the child told us how to how to fix it? I was not paying attention. Oh, you got uh... Okay. You're looking at the Twitter home screen, right? Uh yes. Uh go over. Uh let me see. Let me click. Check. Uh, yeah, go over to settings and support. Okay. Uh, go settings and, and settings and privacy. All right. Uh, security and ac and account access. Okay. Uh, apps and sessions. Connected apps. And then get rid of anything that you don't want there. Uh, 
get rid of me six because they are an NFT supporter. Yeah, like anything there that you don't use or you don't want there, just get rid of it. Alright, I got rid of the fucking NFT shit, I think. Yeah. And then you'll want to go into your follows and uh, unfollow from all that shit. Oh, I didn't follow them, I just get added. Are you sure you didn't follow them? Because they definitely made me follow an NFT account. As far as I know, I didn't follow an NFT account. It's like... Hold on. Yeah, just check your most recent follows. Remember to subscribe and follow Bright on all social media so that you can watch her content oh, if nope, you cannot catch her live. Also, give her dollar. <laughs> Bookworms being your PR team. Yep. No, oh, you're uh, good, bookworm. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm seeing my bell thing, and I'm not seeing me follow anyone. You're seeing your bell thing? Uh, notifications. Sorry. Well, if you're, f it doesn't, it doesn't notify that you followed someone. But you uh, would need there to we go. go. Yeah, what you would need to go do is go to your account, go to uh, the thing that says following, you click on it, and then look through that. Yeah, they made me follow their shit. Yeah. So the lesson is, next time we do that, you got to immediately revoke their permission. I guess that was Bookworm's last word. So yeah. Oh yeah. Before you, I tell you last word. So I, I remember like when I look at uh, following, I need to play this game again. Uh, Anna Mutationum. Not sure if you were there when I played it. I don't think I was. No. Yeah, but uh. They actually liked my tweets a couple times when it tweeted to Twitter. Like the cool. Yeah. I I was surprised by that. But anyway, hatchet last they, ones go. They might have like a an an auto like tweet thing. I think that's a thing that exists. Yeah. But anyway. That's your last words go. And remember, kids, moldy bread is the only nutrients that is necessary when trying to keep a dead dog alive. Mm. All right, I guess for my last words. <clears throat> Did you know that shoving coffee up your ass increases life e expectancy? No, coffee enemas have not been demonstrated to do that. <laughs> don't fit, please don't feed into actual woo. <laughs> do, do you know about that? Yes, I saw um, strange addictions and everything. I, I know. I've seen people actually do that. No, bookworm, don't do that. Coffee enemas is just this weird thing that a whole bunch of, like, conspiracy theory-laden woo There's people 
There was actually a person. Uh, I knew a couple, a couple of people. Instead of coffee, they did water. Well, that's just a normal enema. Yeah, like that's that's a pretty common thing. I've had an enema before. It's used for a lot of different reasons. I asked actually asked one person. I said, "Uh, because I got tired of using toilet paper." That's that's, not, <laughs> that's not how that works. <laughs> you still need to wipe. <laughs> that's. <laughs> Gods help anyone who is in the general vicinity of that person. <laughs> An enema does not negate your need to wipe. It... It, like, it's... <laughs> Medicinally, its primary use is to help break up blockage... Yeah, but Dave would basically do that. Well, you would still need to, like, wipe your ass to get rid of the water. But, yeah, like, a bidet would do that because it's basically cleaning you. But an enema is injecting the water up the, up, up the anus to help clean out the colon. Ah. Like, it, it, the, it's not that the water's going to clean your ass when it comes out. It's just going to be shit water that comes out. <laughs> it that's that's actually about the same as saying I like having diarrhea, so I don't need to wipe my ass. <laughs> that's that's pretty much the exact same thing. Wait, so does that actually? Do you feel anything at all when the water goes up your ass? It, it, it's kind of like an odd pressure, and it's probably like. If you're using cold water, like, you can feel that it's cold, but it, it's just kind of like an odd pressure goes up and then goes back out pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I've I've done an enema before to deal with constipation. It's not all that unpleasant. It's also a common way to prepare for butt sex. <laughs> That's uh, also a thing. How I've dealt with constipation. I, whenever I get constipated, how I deal with it is I eat Peribo gummy bears. No, you need to specifically eat the Haribo diet gummy bears. <laughs> it's the diet gummy bears that give you the shits. I think that is actually the kind I get. Yeah, eat those. Yeah. It's definitely not the healthiest way to go about it, but eat those. It works. <laughs> the other thing you could look into, which I like my my doctor lately like basically prescribed me to go down to the grocery store and get this stuff. It's called Metamucil. It's a fiber supplement and it just generally helps gut gut health. Like uh -huh. it, it, it it clumps up poop that's too that's too watery and it can also help with uh, constipation helps like regulate things. It's it's been like a godsend. Yeah. Why did why did this turn into us talking about shit? Okay. All right. And yeah, enemas. Before, all right. Anyway, before I end stream, uh, when I was really young, uh, I don't know why I couldn't shit, but I couldn't shit, so my colon got filled three quarters of shit. <laughs> I had to take a laxative, and it was not fun. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine. Why are we, why? I had to sit on ice for a while. <laughs> <laughs> had to cool my ass. <laughs> you know, I'm one, I'm one to talk. You know, I'm one to talk when saying this, but sometimes you don't need to you know, out yourself live to two people on the on on your history of constipation and shit. We don't we don't all need to have a detailed description of an instance of shit. I hit Bookworm's message, gotta give the good 
gotta give the people good information to keep their asses clean. We really... We... <laughs> That's the thing. I feel like it's fairly obvious that an enema is not going to clean your ass. Like, like, like the statement, I'm going to inject water into my ass and then have the water that was inside my ass clean my ass. Therefore, I don't need to wipe. Anyone with half a brain would pick up on how that's stupid. That's literally, I'm going to clean my ass with ass water. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, anyway. This is, my head hurts. This yeah. is bad. Anyway, see you later, D-Class. Bye, bookworm. Obviously not to the folks who believe that shit, literally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, I see you, D-Class.